Hello everyone, and welcome to First Place Perspectives, where I show you how to get through some of the toughest minigames with the highest win rates possible. All of these videos are supported by my own data collection efforts. The spreadsheet that I use to track all of my games is free to download in the description of this video, along with a link to the Season 1 statistics video that I made. With that out of the way, let's get into this. On average, Slime Climb kills 58% of people that enter the stage, based on 104 games of data. For this reason, your main goal for this game should be survival, and not getting first place. The clips I show you will still be first place perspectives, so you can better see the techniques you need to know, but remember to always revert to survival mode if you fall behind. Let's start the footage with the triangle bouncer at the start. Aim for the middle if you can, and hit the jump button when you hit the pad. If you're lucky, you'll get the right angle, otherwise take the walk of shame around. For the next incline, there's two variations that you can run. So let's split the screen and we can go over both in succession. For the ball section, your goal should be to get to the right side of the path as quick as possible and into the furthest groove. Do a jump dive to transition to the running section, and then time it right to get across. For the churro cinnamon stick rolling pin thing, the location of your travel is less meaningful. While running the jump section, stick to the right of the platform so that you have the most amount of time to make the jumps. For this next section, position yourself like I am in these two stills. Both of the techniques for the conveyor section use the same starting position because, on average, it's faster than walking around. Angle your movement to 45 degrees once you're on the conveyor belt so you're tracking as fast as possible to the left, while making only a little forward momentum. In this first case, I didn't get lucky with the movement of the pillars, so I take the standard route and cross the beams as usual. For the second sequence, though, I am able to get myself in front of one of the pillars and let it push my jelly bean forward, effectively increasing my movement speed and letting me line up the shortcut. You can do about four attempts at the shortcut before it would have just been faster to go around, so don't be afraid to try a second or third time if it doesn't work the first time. Cross the beams and line yourself up the same as before. Now this first hammer never spins counterclockwise, so we can skip the first third of the hammer section just by jumping up and over it. We'll get rid of the split screen for now, because the next section is the same for both scenarios. Follow this diagonal to the far wall, lining up with the gap between the first two blocks. This one is a bit tricky, but a jump and dive gives you just enough height to clear the edge and you can skip the entire loop. Messing this up three or four times is still faster than walking around. Finally, the top section. With Season 2, two major variations were added to the end. The swinging rattles and the spinning hammers. The goal for the first part is to stick to your preferred side, mine is the left because it's safer, and avoid the middle. Why? Simply put, the time between each pass of the pillar is less the farther from the middle you go. This means you have a higher chance of being able to blindly run past more than one pillar at a time, like what I do in this second clip. For the hammers, follow the winding path between the hammers. You'll notice that the black and white heart guy behind me doesn't cross the finish line, because he tried to go faster than he should have. For the rattles, stick to the edge like the pillars, and you should have no issue getting to the end of the course. It's all about taking your time, so don't rush it. You'll make it there eventually finish up, let's follow this soda bro, because they show us two things. One, there's a large time disparity between first and last, primarily because I shave so much time off each section through the shortcuts I've shown you here. Second, they show us that the safer, longer path is sometimes the correct option, especially if the slime is right behind you. Above all else, take your time, don't panic, and look for the paths of least resistance. I will say he gets pretty risky and lucky in this final section, since they try and rush through the pillars and take a very risky path past the hammers. But it works out, so who am I to judge? With all these strategies in mind, your chances of survival in Slime Climb are definitely higher than they were before. Remember to carve your own path, don't be a lemming, and always consider the alternatives that others do not. Hopefully with all of this, you'll be that much closer to reaching your own first place perspective. Curious about how you can improve your chances of winning other games? Check out the other videos in this playlist for more tips, tricks, and strategies to get you to that crown round. New videos are being posted weekly, so consider subscribing, and post what minigame you want to see done next in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.